right, definers, welcome back to Sustainability Defined, where we are defining sustainability one concept and one bad joke at a time. Today, Jay, very special episode. I, I, li- I like to think that we've been married <laughs> to the definers for a while, and maybe one day when we make that official, we can do it in a sustainable way. We'll learn from this episode because it's all about sustainable weddings. That's right. Scott, I thought you were going to say that, that you and I have been married for going on six years, and I think it's been a very healthy relationship. But no, we've been married to our definers for almost as long. My goodness. <laughs> yes, yes. So, Jay, <laughs> let's get into the outline. What will we be talking about in this episode? All right. So we are going to start by asking what are sustainable weddings? Then what is the environmental impact of weddings? How can definers make their own or their family and friends weddings more sustainable? Who are leaders in the sustainable wedding space? How am I implementing sustainability (laughs) into my wedding coming up. Uh And then we will chat with our expert guest in this interview, Gina Lett Shrewsbury, owner of Inspirations by Gina, a floral and event design studio. Jay, I think we, I feel like we should have had like traditional wedding music instead of our normal stuff. (laughs) Or like the chiming of wedding bells. Maybe you can throw that in somewhere. Okay. Yes. I was about to say that would be our first sound effect ever, Scott. And I think that would (laughs) would be worthwhile. We got the production budget. (laughs) That's right. So, All right, Scott, start us off. What are sustainable weddings in the first place? Well, I feel like it's one of those things that people, you know, when you see it, right, Jay? I feel feel like I've been to weddings where I'm just like, okay, no way are we eating all this food. What's happening to it? Or here are some flimsy plates Uh we're eating off of. uh This is all going into the garbage, right? So yeah, there's a lot to think of, but Jay, we made up a definition. So go ahead. Right. So Scott, to your point, sustainable weddings can be many things, but in this episode, we've defined them as quote, implementing sustainable practices in the planning and execution of a wedding, right? So we made that one up. I think it's pretty good, right? But we Mm -hmm. did find some others online. So Mary Caribbean, which provides Caribbean destination wedding and honeymoon resources, defines sustainable weddings as one that is eco-friendly and conscious of the consumption of resources that would otherwise be used in the wedding. And then there is the appropriately titled website Wedding Bells, much like our Mm -hmm. new sound effect, that it defines it as celebrations plan where the couple's goal is to try to lower their ecological footprint and lower the event's impact on the environment in whichever way they can. So, Jay, Marie Caribbean, I have to tell you that when I saw that, you know, I added in here what that was because at first I was like, is Marie Caribbean a person? Because it reminded right. me of when <laughs> we did sustainable apparel or something like that, where we had marine debris. Uh-huh. Do you remember? Uh-huh. And I was, and I thought it was someone's <laughs> name. And you were like, no, of course it's not. Or Marina Debris? Well, it was, it was debris. Marina Debris. Oh, she is, Marina she debris. is famous yeah. around these parts. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> so Marie Caribbean, not a person. Uh, but what <laughs> is the environmental impact of weddings? So let's talk about that. And... Like we mentioned, there's a lot of things, I think, when people think about what, what could have the impact on weddings, like just getting to the freaking thing, that, <laughs> that certainly has an impact. Um, but then all the stuff you're using, the food you're using, the drinks you're using, and it can add up. Mm-hmm. So let's first talk waste. So the Green Bride Guide, this seems to be like the gospel of green weddings. And it's, it's I think it was 08 or 09, Jay, so it's, it's been around a little while. But in this book, it said the average wedding produces 400 pounds of garbage, and 63 tons of CO2, and that's the equivalent of the CO2 emissions of like four people for an entire year, just this Mm. one event. And so back to that waste stat, a little quick math, you take that 400 pounds, you consider that there's about two and a half million weddings per year in America. That means American weddings produce a billion pounds of trash in a typical year. Right. And so, okay, a billion, a lot, right? But to put that into perspective further, New York City, Residents in New York City produce 24 million pounds of waste, which includes both garbage and recycling, per day. So each year, American weddings produce about 42 days worth of New York City waste. I think that's such a visual stat. I love it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then, you know, we ask, what are the main culprits of this immense amount of waste created from weddings? And Scott, you've alluded to quite a bit of them. The organization Sky Ocean Rescue found that plastic cups, water bottles, disposable decorations, gift bags, fake confetti, and wrapping from table favors were the main contributors to outgoing waste from weddings. So, Scott, I think to me, it it calls to mind all those, you know, like photo booth pictures you see from weddings with like props and stuff that like reference that event. And it's like, you know, okay, the, the photos are not great, but like these things are obviously going right into the trash as soon as it's done. Right. 
Right, or at least uh, the mom's basement or something. Uh, and I love fake conf- What's real confetti? I don't even know. Is there a real confetti? <laughs> I, anyway. Uh, great question. So waste, not the only contributor to a wedding's environmental impact. A big one is transportation. So according to Stanford Magazine, the average carbon footprint of a non-destination wedding is 56.15 tons, with 43 of those tons being used as, on transportation for guests. So what's 43 tons of CO2 emissions? Well, it's equivalent to the greenhouse gas emissions from 97,000 miles driven by an average gasoline-powered passenger vehicle. Right. And Scott, to clarify, that's for a non-destination wedding. Destination weddings tend to have fewer guests, and it depends on how far away the destination is. But that can really add to the transportation footprint of the wedding. Pretty intuitive, but, but definitely a big driver there. So... Talking about all these other impacts outside of just waste on weddings, venues and lodging are another one. They contribute 6% of total carbon emissions from weddings or about 3.37 tons of carbon, which is equivalent to about 7,500 miles driven by an average gasoline-powered passenger vehicle. So really lighting and air conditioning for a lot of these large indoor venues can truly add up. And additionally, imported flowers, they require lots of energy to transport and refrigerate. Flowers, topic in and of itself, Jade, maybe we should talk about flowers at some point. Um, But on top of pollutants and water use, flowers can generate serious carbon emissions because of that refrigeration and transport I was mentioning. Right. And so we'll be talking with Gina coming up more about flowers. We're excited to get there. But that's her thing. Right. That is absolutely her thing. But quick example here. As was noted in an ideas.ted.com article with a title that I think, Scott, you and I would certainly applaud (laughs) called, quote, the environmental impact of cut flowers. Not so rosy. No. (laughs) The article says that in 2018, Valentine's Day flowers grown in Colombia and flown to U.S. airports produced some 360,000 metric tons of CO2. To put that in perspective, that's roughly equivalent to 78,000 cars driven for an entire year. Right. That's not miles driven. That's cars driven for one year, right? It's pretty intense. All right. So how can definers make their own or their family and friends wedding more sustainable? All right. So we're going to go over a bunch of stuff. And hopefully some of what we're saying, some of what Gina says in the interview, you're like, oh, I hadn't thought about that aspect. Or you know, you, you're you're in the midst of planning a wedding. You say, well, I've thought about it, but I didn't think about it that way. So we hope this is useful or some of it. Mm-hmm. And so the next section here, how can definers make their own or their family and friends wedding more sustainable? We're all about solutions here at the podcast, right? So we want to go over some tips and tricks in a variety of areas. And hopefully that inspires you if you're planning a wedding, if you help others plan weddings. Um, so with that, uh, let's get to the first one, Jay, waste. Bingo. So Scott, when it comes to food waste, Stanford University students in an article on green weddings encourage reducing waste by serving food buffet style so people take only as much as they need. Consider giving away then uneaten food to shelters or perhaps let guests take food home in recyclable or reusable containers. Jay, are you that person? I bring like Tupperware sometimes to restaurants. I feel like given this tip, if you see people at a wedding with Tupperware or something like that, to take food home, don't shame them. (laughs) I've been shamed. I'm like, I don't care. I'm a sustainability person. I'm going to do it. Right. And Scott, okay, so here's quick aside. You and I, we both Skyped into a uh, Kellogg business school at the University of Chicago. Uh, Their sustainability and and energy club group not too long ago, they offered to send us some of their swag. And I was thinking, okay, maybe it's like a t-shirt or something. Oh, yeah, And it's, it's a reusable plastic bag, right? So all of a sudden... You know, we can just stroll into these weddings with our Kellogg branded bags and make out with all kinds of right. food. Right. Did you guys go there? Oh, no. We just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> talked to some students and got a bag. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it's basically the tuition. same thing, right? Yeah. Okay. So on top of giving away uneaten food to shelters, some event venues may compost the food. And you could, if they don't, organize a compost pickup or drop off. Quick shout out here to episode six on food waste. And episode nine on composting, some real vintage tracks there, Scott. Mm -hmm. Note, though, we talked, this is about buffets. We do want to note that other sources say that plated meals are actually the way to go so that caterers know exactly how much food to prepare. So the jury's still a little bit out here, but 
Of course, on top of this food waste, selecting reusable or recyclable products for play settings can also reduce an event's landfill waste. Plastic dishware often has to be thrown away if it's contaminated with even partially eaten food. Yeah, Jay, when you say the jury's a little out, I feel like we talked uh, some stats around the carbon footprint of weddings. To be honest, those are a little outdated. You know, I wish there was more recent stuff. I guess yeah. I, I'm also hoping us putting this episode out there uh, stimulates some researcher to really do some stuff. This That would be a great thing to compare and get some numbers around. Yeah, and listeners, hey, if you listen to this episode and, and put something together, let us know. We'd love to share it. For sure. Okay, so decor-related waste. You could consider using items from your own home to decorate the venue. Uh, you could also shop secondhand, Facebook Marketplace. There's a lot of stuff on there you can find, toppers, decorations, mirrors. And on top of that, once you get it, you use it, and then you can resell it or just give it away for free. So uh, that's an option people can use. You can also just consider skipping wedding mementos or favors altogether because you'll know, unfortunately, many of those will end up in the trash as much as you think people want to hold on to these things. So, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle. The more you can reduce, the better. There you go. Something else you can do, and this is something that Anne and I have done, we'll get into more of that in a little bit, but send digital invitations to save time, trees, and postage costs. So to give more context to the environmental impact of sending invitations, or any card really, a recent study revealed that sending one card produces about 140 grams of carbon dioxide. The U.S. mails around 1.3 billion holiday cards a year which is the same amount of CO2 emissions as charging 22 billion smartphones or 22,000 homes energy use for one year. So and that's just holiday cards. That's just holiday cards, right. And so, Scott, as we're, as you know, Ann and I have thought about digital versus, you know, paper cards uh, mm-hmm. and, and the trade-offs, we ultimately went digital, but we did find this fun fact that over the past five years, printed greeting card sales in the U.S. have dropped by nearly 13% as digital invitations then provide an innovative way to save money, save the planet, save time. Um, so I think, you know, that 13% drop in the last five years is, is, you know, something to take note of. Yeah. But I also feel like the greeting cards have almost become a little bit more gimmicky to try to get people to buy it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm thinking there's more with batteries in them, and right? So, so they make those. noises. Oh, I, hate I know, those. but I know. I'm sure the footprint of that is way more. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to think so. Cause like all the ones that like fold out and have more popping stuff, that's just that much more yeah. color paper, you know? I hear you. Totally. All right. So that was a whole bunch on waste. Let's get to the another biggie that we talked about, transportation. So one is thinking about the transportation, not just of your guests, but of the food that's going to be mm-hmm. served, right? So you could think about seasonal dishes, stuff that's from local farmers. And really, I mean, we're talking about the distance the food travels. But honestly, it's much more likely that a larger impact is going to come in what you decide to serve. So if you can reduce that meat, reduce things that are made in a water-intensive way, that's really going to help. Also, remember that 43 tons of CO2 emitted for guest transportation for a non-destination wedding we talked about? Well, one way to do this is you can keep your wedding local. Uh, You can also think about the venues nearby or even just do it all one venue. You could even, I know I've been to a wedding where they had, where it was more like a, a camping site where oh. it wasn't intense, but it was cabins with bunk beds. And then everybody stayed on site. And honestly, it was more fun because then the after party of sorts was just in the cabin. That's you so know, So fun. everybody's there and everybody's participating. I love that. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Okay. And then if you do have different venues associated with your wedding, offer a shuttle. Don't have everybody drive in individual vehicles. Love that. It's the little things. Or encourage them to carpool. Absolutely. And then we want to sh- give a shout out to a cool group we found called TerraPass um, because they have a part of their website that allows people to buy carbon offsets for weddings. So you could use any legit carbon offset, right? But this website just makes it easy um, to think through the footprint of your wedding and then buy the offsets for it. Okay. So we have talked waste. We've talked transportation. Let's talk venues real quick. One of the easiest ways to host a sustainable wedding is to find a venue that prides itself on reducing its carbon footprint, recycling wherever possible, and incorporating renewable energy sources. Junebug Weddings put together a list of questions to ask a potential venue to gauge what efforts they use to be more environmentally friendly. So Scott, what do those look like? I'm going to rattle these off here. So one is, do they offer recycling or composting bins on site, or do they 
suggest someone who can pick up those sort of materials? Do they offer rentals? Uh, what seasons would lower the wedding's carbon footprint if they have a thought there? Are there any local vendors or organizations they recommend connecting with? And do they incorporate sustainable operations or methods? For instance, do they buy offsets for their operations? Uh, do they have solar-powered items that they use? Do they, do they really think through seasonal options? Things like that. Right. Okay. Let's touch on our next topic then, which is flowers. So for flowers, consider buying local or feature potted plants instead of bouquets as table centerpieces so that they can be taken home and planted instead of being thrown away. I, I love that tip. It's so straightforward and it just makes all the totally. sense. Then you have to ask, I think it's central, at least to our decisions talking about flowers. Well, are there any trade-offs between real and faux flowers for weddings? Well, from our research, a recent study found that for single use, fresh flowers are the greener floral option. From production to disposal, a faux flower bouquet that is used only once is responsible for about two and a half times more greenhouse gas pollution. Because the emissions in manufacturing are so significant, the faux flowers must be reused multiple times, perhaps even by other couples for their weddings to break even. Additionally, fake flowers cannot be recycled while real flowers can be composted and diverted from the landfill at the end of their use. A surprising 4% of flowers in the U.S. are properly composted. So if you're leaning towards real flowers, look into how you can properly compost them after the event. And some people might think that number is high. Some might say it's low. I don't know, just given the composting infrastructure in the U.S. But either way, that's not a good number. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, if the fake flowers are used multiple times, it can have a lower impact than the fresh version. And there's companies out there that can help ensure that they get used more than once. For example, we found one company, Something Borrowed Blooms, that specializes in premium silk wedding flower collections, and its blooms are rented for a fraction of the cost of a traditional florist, saving couples over 70%, which is pretty su substantial. And they must make more money, I would think, right? They're just reusing the same product. Mm -hmm. Maybe touching them up a bit. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, and then we did find a number of cool flower companies out there that are thinking through sustainability. So if you do want to go the real flowers route, uh, one company you should check out is the littleflowerpress.com. It makes pressed bouquets into beautiful works of framed art that you can hang on your wall. So then you get further use and enjoyment from them. And then uh, if you like Toy Story, <laughs> you can order flowers made of wood from solawoodflowers.com. Those are actually pretty cool. You should check them out. And I guess <laughs> the Toy Story reference, Jay, you put in here because of Woody. I mean, the man's trying to feed me bad jokes. There's a so snake in my be... boot. Oh, my God. Um <laughs> What else does he say? Oh, man. It's been too long. Reach to the sky. That's it. Did you say that? Okay, good. <laughs> Whew. All right. Now, we also found a group called Bloomerent. I love these names. They're so like Silicon Valley startup oh, yeah. combined things. Uh, <laughs> we're cool. All right. Bloomerent, who picks up your flowers after your event and immediately reuses them in another event. So that's cool. Awesome. Okay. Quickly, let's, let's talk attire. First off, the easiest way to guarantee no emissions with what you're wearing is to go to a wedding wearing nothing at all. That said, <laughs> renting... Which I imagine is what you'll be <laughs> imagining everyone in the audience, Jay, when you're <laughs> nervous up there. Right, huh? right. That said, for those listening to this episode that are coming to my wedding, please actually do wear clothes. Uh, it's not clothes optional. Right, right. <laughs> Can you imagine getting a wedding invite and you're looking for it to say like black tie optional or whatever right. thing is? It says a uh, clothing optional. Maybe there's some destination <laughs> weddings where there's a part of it where that's the case. I, anyway. I guarantee you there has to have been one wedding out there that was performed naked, but I don't think <laughs> I don't think it'll be ours. So, uh -huh. okay, back to attire. <laughs> Bring us back. Yeah. Renting is always a great option for all things attire. Although tuxedos are traditionally rented for weddings, look into renting gowns, bridesmaid dresses, shoes, and accessories that may only be otherwise worn once. Or give a dress another life and look into buying vintage. Many local vintage stores carry one-of-a-kind wedding dresses and wedding attire. All right, some other small tips. One is around the registry. You could create a registry to minimize chances of guests purchasing multiples of the same gift, which then you'd have to return or discard even. 
You can also opt for an experiential registry. You could say, hey, give me money for my honeymoon or this cooking subscription or some travel I want to do. And that eliminates the cost and environmental impact of shipping certain goods. And then you could even have on your registry asking people for used versions of specific items. And this one, Jay, was inspired because one of my friends was showing me their registry where they asked me, they're like, hey, is it weird if we ask for people's secondhand camping tents? Oh. <laughs> I was like, I don't think so, <laughs> like if they're in good shape. So yeah, that my friends are thinking about that. Nice. Well, continuing, we can talk about makeup quickly. So prioritizing cruelty-free and zero-waste makeup is another great way to have an impact. Cruelty-free Kitty highlights over 900 yeah. makeup brands that can help you shop cruelty-free. In fact, in episode number 35, Sustainable Beauty and Personal Care Products, Scott, you and I dive a little bit deeper into this topic, so folks, check that out if it's of interest. Mm -hmm. For send-offs, so the wedding's done, you're walking out, everyone's, you know, praising you and celebrating you like you just, like, shot the game-winning three in NBA playoffs. I don't know. You (laughs) use flower petals from bouquets, dried leaves, or potpourri that won't harm the environment or create waste. All or real confetti, right? <laughs> right, right. That's still on. My, I still want to know what that is. So please email us. Real confetti. We need like one of those stack guys, Scott. You know, that's like constantly just like looking up stuff and fact checking us. You know, so we can yeah. like find. Well, you know, I'm part of the interruption. What did they call that? Like uh, Stat Boy. Oh, Stat Boy. Yeah. Who? who yeah. I think he hosts like Around the Horn or something. He's got a name. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. Tony Reale. There he is. Uh, also, speaking generally, weddings can be a great time to encourage and initiate interpersonal conversations about sustainability. You can take advantage of this time, even if it's for a small bit, and it can really make a difference. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, rings. So one option, you can go vintage, of course. You can also look for conflict-free rings or rings made of moissanite, which is a naturally occurring mineral created in a lab. So you don't have to worry about harming the earth. And the best part, moissanite stones look exactly like the real diamonds and they cost a whole lot less. Excellent. So Scott, Next section here, who are leaders in the sustainable wedding space? Well, Naturally Chic highlights the best eco-friendly wedding planners across North America. Let's dive into a few of these planners that stood out to us and discuss what sustainable services they offer for weddings. First, we have Joanne Moore Weddings in Colorado, which rents serviceware items versus purchasing things that will just get thrown out. Joanne Weddings also chooses biodegradable products and even donates leftover flowers to the local senior center or hospital. Greater Good Events believes that there is an opportunity to leave every interaction better than before by integrating a set of sustainability and inclusion-focused best practices. They strive to act by their better-than-before mantra by sourcing vendors that align with their mission. We love that they work with local organizations and vendors to ensure any leftover food is brought to a food rescue. And then keen events in where else but Portland, Oregon, make it their mission to meet couples where they're at and incorporate sustainable practices such as integrating local, organic, and seasonal food into clients' menus. There's also the Green Wedding Alliance. It seems to be only focused on Chicago, but it is a community of about 40 environmentally and socially responsible event vendors. And there's also a Green Wedding Professional Course. This seems to be what this group focuses on offering, and it teaches wedding professionals how to increase their bottom line while helping clients reduce their wedding's environmental impact. And Jay, we looked at the FAQ, and they mentioned that their textbook for this course is a book we've already talked about, The Green Bride Guide. The Gospel. Yeah, how to create an (laughs) earth-friendly wedding on any budget. So you can also just go and purchase this yourself. Um, So that's an option. Yes, awesome. All right, now the fun stuff, Jay. Here we go. All right, <laughs> Scott, I believe we are now talking about how I am implementing sustainability yes. into my wedding. Okay, well- uh, Walk the walk here, Jay. What do we got? Right. What are you doing? And and first and foremost, definers who otherwise haven't uh, found out, I don't know where we've shared this news, but it's out. Scott's officiating. Okay, so mm-hmm. the one, the only Scott Breen is officiating uh, Anna and my wedding. And so therefore, I mean, that has to have some kind of sustainability points endemic to it. But that aside- <laughs> Right. So, um, you know, I, th- I think Ann and I, it's, it's funny. We talked to Gina about this coming up, uh, mm-hmm. you know, to have a sustainable wedding, you don't have to nail it on every single front. I think it's just, you know, weddings are so much about conversation and just kind of figuring out what options are best. And so, mm-hmm. you know, a- as we've kind of been thinking about 
our wedding and, and ways to implement sustainability, it's shaken out kind of the way I'm going to describe, not to mean by any stretch that this is like any kind of prescriptive means to do it. So it's, it's very personal, but I think this is the way we have felt better about doing ours. Sure. So first thing we sent digital invites, um, we opted not to send, you know, paper, say the dates and paper wedding invites. And I know like that got pushed back from my mother and my grandmother who were like, well, I want, you know, a physical invite. And we thought, okay, that's, that's fine. We can still make, uh, you know, like printed versions of what we send online. But for most people, we're just going to go digital. And I think that's been working out very well. And I will say the digital version, it looked like it wasn't just, it, it looked like a designed card, right? Right, right. We used, um, I mean, I'm sure you, Scott, you've seen this and Definers, you too, like those paperless posts is what we did. Right. So it's, it's you know, it's got a good look to it. It's not like a, you know, a blank word document that's like J, right. you know, Anna and Jay's <laughs> wedding, you know, June 3rd. Uh, With diff- different fonts. Yeah, like, no. yeah. yeah. It looked it legit. Margins, just awful. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, sir. Um, so we did digital invites. We chose a venue that is local to us. And I, I say to us because we still have a lot of family out of state, but we did want to choose something that was at least, you know, close to our home. Um, and we like this venue. I mean, we got engaged right across the street, but this venue requires that all of their events use purely reusable dishware. Uh, so there's no, you know, plate waste or, you know, plastic forks or whatever it might be that gets put into uh, landfill, you know, through any of their events. Do they rent it to you or you have to go find your own? They leave that open so you can find your own. Our caterer um, also adheres to, you know, I think sustainability principles. They mm. they just bring their own dishware um, so that it's, you know, reusable and they just reuse it every event they go to. So it was nice for us not to have to kind of worry about that. And what about silverware? Silverware? Oh, Scott, I haven't even thought about silverware. Let's hope they bring it. If not, stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned for a future episode. I haven't even thought about that yet. Okay. What about napkins? Is it uh, linen or? Yeah, like... I think we're going to be, and this will actually perfectly bring us to our, our next point here, uh, yeah, yeah. which is this whole universe and resource of Facebook marketplace. I mean, it can be Craigslist, it can be whatever, but this secondhand market for what's out there. So, you know, I think we're going to look at, at linens through Facebook marketplace, but we've already bought a number of things that have been previously used. And so we're feeling good about being able to give those a second life. So specifically we've talked about, uh, flowers, obviously we, we have faux boutonnieres and then faux flower arrangements for the tables. And so, you know, in my head, Scott, as you and I were doing the research for this episode, thanks also to Amelia, of course, um, you know, you see that two and a half times number in which you have to, you know, use a fake plant about two and a half times to get it to yeah. balance out. And I think we're, we're about there. I, I can't guarantee how many other folks have used some of our other materials we're buying secondhand before us, but our intent is to use these flowers and then resell them and, and kind of keep that going. And I think there's actually a thriving marketplace for that. Um, so in addition to the boutonnieres and flowers, we got our, uh, just kind of regular water glasses and champagne flutes also from Facebook marketplace. And that was really cool. And I think I might touch on this briefly in the interview, but we got to just piggyback off of the work that this other visionary bride did. And she went out and thrifted all of these mismatched mugs and glasses and flutes that kind of create this very certain aesthetic that I think Anna and I really enjoy and so she got all that secondhand. She assembled it and used it for her wedding. We're now able to just take all those really for barely more than we would have paid to rent this stuff uh, to use it ourselves and then sell it and just kind of keep those going. So that's been really fun too. So okay. that was a bunch of Facebook marketplace. Um, we talked about transportation earlier, Scott. So yeah, folks for us are most likely going to be staying in Boulder the wedding itself, the the ceremony and the reception site, they're both in Lyons, which is about 20 minutes north. So we are, we have some shuttles running between the two to minimize, you know, individual car trips to the extent that we can. Uh, we mentioned the experiential registry, 
which Anne and I are also doing. We're going to South Africa. And so we're giving folks the opportunity to contribute to, uh, for example, great white shark diving <laughs> that we want to do nice. when we're in South Africa. Um, and then I love this. Anna, speaking of vintage dresses, she is tailoring and reusing her mom's old wedding dress for our rehearsal brunch. So that'll kind of be this really mm. special uh, reuse of what her mom wore, uh, you know, for Anna's wedding too. So I don't know. I mean, Scott, there's a, there's a lot, there is all kinds of stuff that goes into wedding planning infinitely more than I would have thought going into it. But yeah, I guess the good news is that gives you opportunities to implement sustainability, however, and in, in, in whichever way is best uh, for each couple out there. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just nice hearing you say this because you, I can hear you sound excited about yeah. it, you know, and I guess it could probably be a little wedding planning. I haven't done it, but just everyone I talk to is like, oh, every night I'm thinking about wedding planning and it's such a hassle and this and that. But it sounds like this was maybe, I don't want to ask you, like, was it somewhat fun to think through, well, how can we do this part or that part to be a bit more sustainable or reuse things? So I would hope that it not only reduces the impact of the wedding, but maybe thinking through sustainable weddings can be can add a bit of fun into the process? I think so. And and to be honest, like I need to give credit where credit's due. Anna spearheaded a lot of this stuff, especially the Facebook marketplace stuff. But really, I, I think it's so easy, Scott, as I guess, as I've experienced, to just kind of get swept up in the wedding industry. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everything becomes very black and white and it's, it's very sequential and procedural to the point of where it, it starts to feel a little impersonal. And so for us, I think, recognizing that and then consciously layering in this element of sustainability and executing on it, it just makes it feel more like your own, yeah. I think, which is just critical for your own wedding. So I'm I'm very happy we've done it. Well, I'm excited to see all this in action. Um, so it's going to be a good time. Uh, but Jay, tell us about the, the guest. Yes. Okay. And Scott, quick side note, all of our guests cannot be more excited for the the master of ceremonies coming up. So you're going to have some fanfare in just a few short months. Ah, no pressure. Great. <laughs> okay, so enough about me. Let's transition now to our expert guest, Gina Let Shrewsbury. Gina is the owner of Inspirations by Gina, a full service floral and event design studio based in California. Gina is a certified green wedding professional and creates quote couture floral experiences with an eco-friendly twist. Gina started her company in 2008 as a wedding planner and has gradually moved her area of specialization into the floral design space. Can't wait to chat with her. Yeah, and Jay, I will say Gina's laugh, it's just, <laughs> that, that is as enjoyable as the insights she provides on wedding planning and flowers and such. I feel like if we need to pipe in some laughter, you know, talking about sound effects in our episodes, we'll just... Copy and paste that in somewhere. Could not agree more. All right, Definers, welcome to our expert guest interview in this episode on sustainable weddings. I am so excited to glean insights from our upcoming guest for what I can use in my upcoming wedding. Mm -hmm. But without too much further ado, let's introduce our expert guest, Gina Let Shrewsbury, the owner of Inspirations by Gina, a floral and event design group. Gina, thank you so much for joining us. We can't wait to talk to you today. And Jay, Scott, thank you for having me on today. Sure. All right. So Gina, let's, let's start from the very beginning. Tell us about your interest in floral and event design. Was there something that got you into that space in the very first place? I actually started as a wedding planner back in 2008. Looking back on it, the reason why I wanted to become a wedding planner was I loved designing, mm-hmm. but slowly went in a direct other direction and it was more about logistics and planning. Mm-hmm. And even though I was really good at it, there were times when I would be at a wedding where, um, you know, the bride or the bride's family or sorority sisters, whoever were supposed to put together the bouquets or the centerpieces. And I'd get there the day of the wedding and it fell upon me. And so I started doing that more and more. And then um, I remember I was talking to a floral colleague of mine and explaining what was happening more and more. And she said, well, Gina, you know, I'm taking, I'm, I'm a teacher 
over at the local community college and I teach floral design. And she said, well, you know, you already have a great eye. Why don't you take a couple courses, you know, mm. just, just on wedding day, that way you're prepared, you know, mm. to, learn, to know the mechanics. And um, that was back in 2017. And I took three courses and then... Um, What's the final for those courses? Do they give you a bunch <laughs> of random flowers and say... Well, yeah, no, you have to you have to put together, you know, you have to put together designs. And wow. um, we also had lab work and hmm. we would put together, you know, floral arrangements and then they would be sold to the students um, during lunchtime on Thursdays. So... I was doing that at the same time running my business. And then in October, 2019, I said, you know what, I gotta, I gotta cut off the wedding planning. And I'm so glad I did because, you know, a couple months later we hit the pandemic. And so that's how I, you know, got into it in the first place. I love it. It's, you know, I get to go home a little bit earlier. Um, flowers don't talk back. <laughs> um, flowers aren't bridezillas or groomzillas, <laughs> you know? <laughs> They are just, they're just beauty and they bring joy to everyone. And, it, and when, you know, when someone gives another person flowers, they, they smile for the most part. Mm -hmm. well, that's what my girlfriend tells me. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, keep giving her flowers. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's I've, I've heard that advice before. Okay. So <laughs> let's say, Gina, uh, you, I, I love how you got into this, you know, you're kind of doing it anyway. Someone said, take some courses. That's great. At what point did sustainability come into it, where you said more explicitly on your website to your clients, like, hey, this is something you should consider. I can help you with it. When did that come into the mix? Actually, that came in the mix when I was a wedding planner. Um, and, you know, and I wasn't doing floral design. And I saw the amount of waste mm. that took place at weddings. I remember there was this one wedding in San Francisco um, about seven years ago. And there was a traditional wedding cake and then there was a groom's cake. And I remember the groom's cake. It was designed to look like a bottle of Hennessy. Okay. And it had little mini bottles around it. And the guests were so drunk, they didn't eat the groom's cake. And the groom's cake wound up going in the trash can. It just, it, it really bothered me. And then there was other instances with other weddings, you know, flowers were being thrown in the trash, um, food being thrown in the trash. And, you know, I come from a background where, you know, growing up, we didn't waste anything. Mm -hmm. There was nothing wasted. Um, I, you know, my mom always had a garden. Um, she grew vegetables. We had fruit trees. And it was always about maximizing what you had. And, you know, if you could repurpose it, great. It just really bothered me to see how much waste there is with weddings. So it sounds like you sort of came to this epiphany on your own of like mm -hmm. stuff that really oh, yeah. gnawed at you and said, maybe I'll put it into how I approach my advice around weddings. But I exactly. guess I'm wondering, did people also proactively ask you, hey, can you help me with this? Or was it more you offered first? And then people asked later, perhaps. Um, I started offering it. Um, I, you know, I got my my certification in green weddings. Oh, who offers that? It's the Green Wedding Guide. Um, okay. And they do have a website, and they're at that point, you know, they're still a wedding planner, and that's where I really learned about how to make a wedding green. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with getting a brand new wedding dress, but, you know, sometimes, you know, people spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on a, a wedding dress and then they would trash the wedding dress. Oh my God. You know, it was, it was a trend. It was a trend where, you know, they would jump in the pool or they jump in the ocean and, you know, a lot of wedding favors back in the day that be on the table and then there would just be so much trash from that they would mm -hmm. leave the wedding favors behind you know whatever it was a lot of paper uh, menu cards programs um, all this chotsky stuff that would just be just lingering around and then i would have to clean it up at the end of the night and so through the green um 
wedding guide. I learned how to become more sustainable, you know, because every wedding and event is different. Sure. And as a planner, I was going in and seeing, okay, where can I reduce that carbon footprint? Got it. And so Gina, I think this is a, a great pathway leading us to our next set of questions for you. Mm-hmm. And the the goal of which being to understand really what your role looks like for the weddings that you serve and mm-hmm. then how you're incorporating sustainability into it. So the first part of that question is, could you just walk us through what your typical wedding service looks like? What kinds of things are you doing? And then really what, what role are you playing? Okay. Well, in terms of a floral designer, of course, you know, I have the consultation, you know, with the potential client and pre pandemic, you know, you would, you would meet them, you would meet them at a, you know, coffee shop or you meet them at the venue. And so that incorporated, you know, getting in the car and traveling somewhere. And of course, using fossil fuel. Um, Now, basically, I have streamlined the process where we have a meeting, either on the phone, or we do a zoom call, or FaceTime. Mm -hmm. Another aspect that, that I use is instead of with like the flower deliveries, just going to one location, I try to group it as much as possible. Let's say that I'm delivering flowers in one particular area that I think, okay, maybe I can meet, meet with, with a venue or I can meet with a client or I can go to the flower mart. I try to group it as much as possible that way. Um, you know, I'm not driving back back and forth. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm speaking with my couples, my um, potential clients, I tell them kind of, you know, the process is that basically once the contract is signed, we, you know, we have like a design meeting. And in that design meeting, I talk about how we can repurpose as much as possible in the wedding. And when I say repurposing, like, for instance, with the ceremony, any florals that are part of the ceremony, the the arch pieces, you know, floral design on the aisle or pew decorations, anything that is part of the ceremony, where can we repurpose it in the cocktail hour? Where can we mm-hmm. repurpose it in the reception? And then after the wedding or event, I like for the guests to take those flowers with them. You know, if it's a destination wedding and everybody has flown in or drove in, you know, however they've gotten there and they can't take the flowers with them, then I make arrangements with the couple. I will take the flowers and then I will repurpose them and put them in small, you know, small bases and then give them to skilled nursing facilities um, hospices. And there's also a great organization in the Sacramento area called Petal Connection. And what they do, they're kind of like flower gleaners. Um, they take flowers that are left over from grocery stores, um, big box stores, and then they repurpose them. And they make they also make small arrangements and they get back to the community. And so my philosophy is these flowers are, they're just not meant for just one day. Mm -hmm. Use them as much as you can. And another practice that I have um, with Inspirations by Gina, I'd have to say 80 to 90% of the time I'm buying California grown. Mm -hmm. The thing with imports, and I hope this doesn't, I don't get in trouble for this, but it does leave um, a carbon footprint because you know the flowers are let's say coming from south america they're cut and then they're put in a box and then that box is put on a plane and then it's flown to miami and it sits in customs then it's loaded on a truck or it's loaded onto a plane and then it gets to whatever wholesaler and then from there the wholesaler Either they put it on a plane or they truck it or the designer goes in to the wholesaler and purchase the product. So there's a lot of traveling with those blooms. And for me, I just want to reduce the carbon footprint as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And 
Uh, do you have with your clients sort of your top five things that you advise them to do to make it a more sustainable event? Like what are, you, what are your key suggestions to them? And maybe I would wonder of those top five, are there any that you've been kind of surprised people don't do more? Um, I always try to tell them less is more, but less is more doesn't mean that it's cheap looking yeah. or inexpensive. Um, and I know that there's a minimalist movement out there, um, you know, with clean lines, there's, there's not anything wrong with that. But when I say less is more, it's like reduce or reduce the amount of paper that you have. Um, yeah, you know, it looks pretty to have a menu card on, on each place setting. I mean, that's, that's a beautiful look, but if you want to be more sustainable, just have one menu card on the table because chances are, and I know I'm going to get in trouble with the stationary people, but you know, everybody, you know, everybody's different. It's just us, Gina. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, if you see me on CNN and I've been taken out by a stationary mm-hmm. person, you'll know what happened. But, um, you know, in terms of your flower selection, you know, everybody, everybody loves peonies. I mean, peonies are, they're such a beautiful flower, but they're not available year round. Mm. And so it's not just where you get it from, but what season in which you're trying you're to get right. the flower. So that can, right. I hadn't thought yeah, about look that. At okay. the, look at the, the season. Um, you know, the beauty of California is we can pretty much grow everything year round. See, but at least you're making friends with the California tourism people. I know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, also, you know, there's there's great product. Um, you know, there's peonies that come from Alaska and Oregon. Those are those are great. But, you know, they have a season, too. So look at look at mm-hmm. the seasonality of the product. I mean, like I said, peonies, if you want them in November, um, they're not going to be American peonies. They're going to be coming from either Chile or New Zealand. That's where I come in to help a client and say, okay, instead of peonies, maybe we can go with garden roses. Here's a garden rose that mimics the look mm-hmm. of a peony. If you if you don't want to have centerpieces on your tables, you can have like potted plants. And those can be repurposed. Those can be planted in your garden or they can be planted in a container. And so they're going to have optimum use. It's not, you know, a short shelf life. I am curious as you take a step back now and you've, you know, you've had your planning career, you've had now you're more of a focus on, on floral design. What are the biggest things you've learned about incorporating sustainability into your practices and and perhaps any surprises you learned along the way? Being sustainable, being organic, um, you know, sometimes it can, it can cost a little bit more. But my philosophy with that is you either pay now or you pay later. And when I say pay later, you know, you're not reducing the carbon footprint. You're contributing to climate change. You know, when you when you go with sustainable something sustainable or organic, you're helping the planet. You're actually helping yourself. Um, the one thing that I found out in, in floral design and early in my Career, I was using a lot of foam. And when I found out that foam, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, it has formaldehyde in it. That's what they use to, you know, at funeral homes. Oh, yeah. We got, we did an episode on Green Burial. Yeah. And it's like, I'm handling this foam and it's breaking off in chunks. And if I don't wash my hand and I rub my nose or eyes, that product is getting in my system. Sure. So I have definitely reduced using foam and I try to stay away from it as much as possible. And I use, I, you know, in my designs, I, I try to use foam free mechanics. Totally. Um, anything else that was surprising to you? Surprising is there's a lot of plastic in our industry, you know, especially when, when we're picking up the flowers from the wholesaler. Not always, but but sometimes the growers, they put the product in plastic. 
And I wish there were a way that I could recycle that or not really recycle it. I do recycle it, but repurpose it. I wish I could figure out a way to repurpose it. or reusable something or another. Yeah. Reusable it's, and it, I can't, unless I use it as a packing material, but there's, there's a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I, when I come back from the wholesaler and I'm starting to process the flowers, I mean, the recycling bin fills up. I've got to figure out a way how to reuse all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, sounds like uh, could be the next business. I know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then I want to ask about interest in this stuff generally from your clients and then get into specific clients. I know you can't, mm -hmm. don't name, name names or anything, but just stories of what people, you've seen people do. So first question, just quickly, have you no, did you notice an uptick in the amount of people? I know you said that you ask people to consider these things, but are, have you noticed clients saying, Hey, I sought you out because I saw on your website, you care about this stuff or, oh, absolutely. you know, before you even get into it, people say, Hey, I want to make sure that you're thinking about sustainability. Can you talk to us about the level, like what percent of your clients are, you can tell are actively interested in sorting this out? I'd say probably 60 to 70%. I wow. mean, they, they mm -hmm. do seek me out and I've mm -hmm. seen the uptick in it in the last, um, I say the last three years, I've seen a huge uptick. Okay. And then can you talk to us about any clients that just went above and beyond and just tell us how they, what they did, you know, or you were even like, wow, you guys really uh, <laughs> did, did something that a lot of couples wouldn't do, but that's great. Um, I had one where, and this was when I was still a planner. I mean, they went to the point where they pretty much repurposed everything out of their apartment for the wedding. Wow. Mm. <laughs> when I saw the moving band come up, <laughs> I almost fainted. I was like, wow. I mean, they were really into it. I mean, the rentals were minimal. I mean, they went with linens. They chose a location where, you know, everyone in the wedding party and a number of guests could stay on site there was also an option for camping. If any other guests wanted to stay, they went to thrift stores and got all this china and flatware. Wow. They really, they went above and beyond. <laughs> well, and I, I have to ask, Gina, I mean, did that add a, a very unique and personal layer yeah. to the entire wedding? You know? Oh, I think, absolutely. To, to be honest, like, you know, we're, you know, Anna and I are going through the process and it's so easy to just kind of, um, see how the process works where you're just, you know, proposal for this proposal for that. And you kind of just, it's almost, you dissociate with it because it becomes so transactional, but mm -hmm. uh, hearing your story makes you think, well, wow, you know, if, if you truly lean into this stuff and, and perhaps do some things that are less conventional, that it might really show itself in the overall environment of the wedding. W would you say that's accurate? Oh yes, absolutely. And a lot of times people are influenced by Pinterest or Instagram and what they see on there, or maybe they went to a cousin's wedding or their best friend's wedding. And sometimes, you know, people get in, they get caught up in that and mm -hmm. what is there instead of having their own take, because a mm -hmm. wedding should be a reflection of who you are and what you believe in. I completely agree, and and I can't recall if I mentioned this in the introduction or not, but what Anna has done, which I think touches exactly to what you're speaking about, Gina, is uh, whether it's a thrift store or for her, she's been really taking advantage of Facebook Marketplace, where mm -hmm. she can go and find, you know, mixed matched glassware that overall, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was the, the person who sold it to her that thrifted all of it, but you know, she puts it together and is able to see it, buy it, we'll use it. And then we'll be able to pass it on to the next person. Um, all under that, you know, let's not just do the rental approach and, and see what we could do to make this feel a little bit more personal. So I think mm -hmm. what you're saying is, is resonating with me as we're, you know, coming up on my date 
which um, Gina, I don't know if we told you this, but Scott's going to be officiating my wedding. So I don't know if that's the best decision or the worst decision <laughs> about the wedding. Just hope that you don't wind up on YouTube. <laughs> that is my one goal or for the wedding, on. yes. Um, and also to step aside when they do their first kiss. That's my other goal. So right. I got to remember to do that. So Gina, I, first of all, I just want to say I love that example of all the stuff that that one couple did. When you talked about how they encouraged camping, I don't know why, but my head went to like seeing someone on the clothesline, they've got their tux from like the night before or something. <laughs> I just, I love that image. But how much do you recommend couples communicate in advance and or at the event? Hey, we made this choice because of this. I mean, if you have a website or you're sending a save to date or you're sending out invitations, whatever form of communication you're, you're using, you let the guests know this is what we're doing in terms of sustainability. Mm -hmm. You know, all floral arrangements at the end of the night are going to be turned into mini bouquets and you can take them as gifts. You know, give the guests enough notice to know what's going on. Yeah, that seems wise to me. Yeah, like on the website, um, you know, say, well, in lieu of wedding gifts, donate to housing funds so for our first down payment, or, you know, we yeah. want to get a new couch, or we want to go to Tahiti, you know, give information as soon as you can, and repeat it. Let them know on the website, put as much detail as possible so that there's no surprises. Right. And so Gina, as we move towards the end of our interview, I do want to transition to a little bit of a different theme here. One mm -hmm. that Scott and I are, are doing our best to work into more and more of our conversations. And that involves this theme of equity and inclusion. So mm -hmm. you have a very powerful inclusivity and sustainability statement on your website. We mm -hmm. invite all definers to go check it out right on her homepage at inspirationsbygina.com. But Gina, can you talk more about your commitment to inclusivity and sustainability and generally just where that stems from? Well, it stems from, from me being an African-American woman in America. And after um, George Floyd was murdered um, two years ago, boy, it's just time. Where is time mm -hmm. gone? It, there was a lot of, there was a lot of discussion um, about racial injustice in this country and rightfully so. And me being in the, in the industry and the special event industry since 2008, I had suffered some discrimination, um, but also I had seen discrimination um, and it really bothered me. And with the, with the racial injustice coming up um, in 2020, the summer of 2020, I really wanted to take a stand and show potential clients, current clients, other businesses, this is where I stand. And if you don't stand with me, we cannot do business. Mm. I mean, everyone is part of the human race and we need to treat each other with respect and kindness. Has it also impacted how you go about actually designing the flowers and advising on the events? Oh, absolutely. I have a questionnaire that I, I give to potential clients um, before I speak with them. And that helps me find out who they are and if we're going to be a good fit. It's almost as, it's almost like online dating, you know, mm. it's just, uh, okay, this person winked at me, but I don't know if I <laughs> want to deal with them. <laughs> Swipe left. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, run for your life. <laughs> and so in that questionnaire, I, I really get an idea of who they are. And then for the most part, people who do hire me, we're on the, we're on the same page. I remember um, this was probably about 10 years ago. I was at a uh, industry mixer and I was talking to the sufficient and I had a same-sex couple at the time, and they were looking for an officiant, and I had talked to this officiant about the couple, and he said, well, I don't, I don't, I don't work with those type of people, and I walked away mm. 
because I felt if you feel like that, I mean, you're, you're, you can believe whatever you want to believe. I'm not going to force anything down your throat. But if you feel that way about this couple, how do you feel about me? That's why I put that statement up there. And it also, it's, it's for my team that works with me. I don't tolerate bigotry, racism, or treating someone unkind based on that person's circumstances. And I wonder, you know, here you are the vendor having this stance and not working with certain clients if they can't align with it. I wonder for those planning sustainable weddings, if they almost need to think about their own equity and inclusion statement and oh, yes. make that clear to all the vendors yeah. and say, exactly. if you're not on the exactly. same page with me, you're out. <laughs> exactly. And, exactly. Oh, yes. And I think couple couples are looking, they're looking at that more and more and more, mm. especially since George Floyd. Sure. A lot of people are thinking about that. They're thinking about how can they be more diverse in their wedding. Mm-hmm. Well, with that, I, I think we want to go to our last question here, Gina. So okay. let's say that I'm at Jay's wedding, which is going to happen, <laughs> God willing. Uh, and Wait a minute, but you're officiating. I don't know. I'm going to be. I'll be around. <laughs> yeah, Scott, yeah. we're going to we're going to need you there. If they don't uh, <laughs> kick me off after I screw things up, but <laughs> let's say I'm talking with everybody and I want to give some sort of fact about sustainable weddings at the cocktail or whatever Jay and Anna have planned as we hold on to our glasses that have been rented in this or been bought through Facebook Marketplace, what would be that one fact around sustainable weddings that I could talk about at the party that would surprise people? All it takes is just one person to do one action item. That's all it takes. Your wedding doesn't have to be 100% sustainable. Sometimes you can't do that. It, sometimes it's unrealistic. But if you just make one change, think about what you're doing. You know, I wish I had some stats. I'm not a stats type of chick. <laughs> 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 but, you know, it, it's, it's just I really want people to start thinking about how they can make a difference. Mm-hmm. And there's not, you know, one particular flower that's more sustainable than the other. I mean, yeah, you know, you could say that a carnation lasts longer than a ranunculus, um, you know, um, a, a, a fact, okay, dried flowers, that, that's sustainable because there's a lot of flowers out there that you can dry. And so that's extending the shelf life and dried flowers are very popular. I mean, you know, the whole wedding doesn't have to have dried flowers, but you can incorporate dried flowers into it. And that's a huge sustainable practice that's going on right now. All right. So Gina, we just want to thank you so much for coming on, helping educate our definers as well as myself about ways to make weddings more sustainable. I am fortunate enough to have a few months lead time to incorporate some of the strategies you've suggested. Can't wait to do so. But thank you again so much for joining us. And we look forward to catching your bouquets as they're coming out in weddings in the future. Thanks again. (laughs) And thank you for having me. I, you know, I hope that, that the audience, um, you know, the listeners can, you know, have one takeaway. I mean, if you can't remember everything, just remember that, you know, you're the catalyst to change. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, Gina. Thanks, Gina. Thank you. All right, Scott, every wedding ceremony, no matter how fantastic, no matter how much an officiant like a Scott Breen crushed it, must come to a close. So if we are calling our sustainable weddings episode, a ceremony. It's time to wind it down and move to our send off. Can't we just call this the after party? (laughs) Go ahead. What are we doing in this after party? All right. Well, it's, it's a, I guess more of a, you know, news bulletin than after party, but maybe we can just say we've got some champagne on the side. Um, So listeners, definers, thanks for sticking with us. This episode, a couple updates for you before we get into our thank yous and our reviews. 
Scott and I have been busy. We've been cranking this content out and we've had a blast doing it. That said, we're going to take a three month break from new episodes. So don't fret if you don't see any new episodes coming into your podcast player over the next several months. We're still at it. We're still grinding. And we'll be back later in the year with some hot, fresh new content. All right. Stay subscribed. We're going to come back. Just like with Jason getting married. All right. Let the man get married without thinking about the podcast. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So quick news update. Let's move on to our thank yous. We want to thank Amelia Kovac for her help with our research and our intro notes. We want to thank Keaton Butler for her audio editing magic that she helps with mm-hmm. every episode. Also, we want to thank Square Peg, Round Hole, and Potions for the music we use throughout this episode. Okay, and we also want to encourage everyone to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast, particularly on Apple Podcasts, but wherever you get your podcasts. And Jay, I have not read this review, but you're telling me there's a really good this one is, that was just posted. This huh? is a good one. Is it a good one? one? Yes, it is. All right, so I'm going to read this for the first time while uh. I read it out loud here. Okay, <laughs> so this is uh, March 9th, 2022. It's from Film User. Okay, and it's titled, Your Brain Grows Three Sizes, and then parentheses, in a good way. All right, so here's the review. A cocktail of neurological delight. Recipe, two parts mind-tickling knowledge. One part effortless friendship. A dash of puns, and then in parentheses, heavy pour. And a four drops of woe. Combine and stir in a chilled glass of rock-solid research. Serve with a slice of inspiring expertise, and then parentheses, or lemon. <laughs> So that's the recipe. Um, And then the review continues. If you are looking for an accessible entry into sustainability and eager to find a podcast that delivers truly fascinating knowledge on subjects far and wide, episode after episode, then Scott and Jay are your guides. Cheers. Film user. How about that? The... I love I love the creativity. Yeah, it's the sentiment and the creativity. I mean, this one I think this one's an all timer for me. All right. Well, I feel like I say these on most of the reviews, and I'm like, you got to email us, like film user. You got to email us, let us know it was you, and we want so we can thank you directly. Um, But we'll also thank you right now. So this this is very kind of you, and we hope others will do the same. We'll keep reading one of these each episode, and I think that about does it for this episode, Jay. You all stay sustainable out there. I'm Scott Breen, and I'm Jay Siegel. We will see you next time.